Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. On August 6, CNBC reported that US President Trump would impose a 100% tariff on all imported chips and semiconductors, excluding companies building factories in the United States. Trump explained, we will impose high tariffs on chips and semiconductors, but if you build a factory in the United States, or have explicitly committed to building a factory in the United States, then, without a doubt, you will not be subject to this tariff. The clear purpose of this move is to relocate advanced chip manufacturing to the United States and fundamentally alter the global chip competition landscape. In fact, the demand for advanced chip companies to build factories in the United States began during the Biden administration, though the policy was less aggressive back then. The Biden administration at least introduced the Chips and Science Act, offering subsidies of up to $52.7 billion to induce companies to build factories. Chip companies that have agreed to or are in the process of building factories in the United States include TSMC, Intel, Samsung, SK Hynix, and Micron. These five major chip manufacturers are building 90 new advanced wafer fabs in Arizona, Texas, New York, Idaho, Indiana, and other locations with a total investment expected to exceed $300 billion and create over 100,000 high-paying jobs. Now, under the sway of tariffs, these five companies will build more than 24 wafer fabs, with a total investment exceeding $600 billion and hundreds of thousands of direct and indirect jobs. According to the Semiconductor Industry Association, the share of domestic chip manufacturing in the United States has fallen from 37% in 1990 to 10% today, a loss of 27% of the market share. By 2022, chips with process technology below 10 nanometers will be almost entirely manufactured in Taiwan and South Korea, with production capacity accounting for 69% and 31%, respectively. Another research report indicates that by 2024, mainland China's mature process chip production capacity will reach 8.6 million wafers per month, with a global market share of 37%, ranking second. By 2027, this figure will reach 43%, making mainland China the world's largest mature process chip manufacturing base. This is also why the US government is eager to distort the current global chip landscape. But often, ideals are full of promise, but reality is harsh. Let's first discuss the unreliability of building a factory. TSMC's construction of its factory in Arizona has been fraught with setbacks. Due to poor infrastructure, a shortage of skilled workers, and the difficulty of managing local American workers, the chip factory's production launch has been repeatedly delayed, and only one 4 nanometers fab has been commissioned. Now, building 24 fabs at once is simply too much for both the infrastructure and the skilled workforce. Delays in production will become the norm, and some fabs may even face permanent suspension due to substandard yield rates. And who will the chips be sold to after they're manufactured? China is the world's largest consumer market for chips, and over 70% of the world's chips enter the Chinese market after they're manufactured. According to customs data, China's chip imports are projected to reach 2.74 trillion renminbi in 2024. In the first half of 2025, China imported 281.88 billion chips, valued at 1.38 trillion renminbi. Regionally, U.S. chips account for 3% of China's total imports, with the remainder primarily coming from other Asian regions, such as South Korea and Taiwan and Europe. China's chip production capacity 
is rapidly expanding. Yangtze Memory Technologies plans to launch a fully domestic chip production line by the end of the year, and domestic companies are actively pursuing domestic substitution. The Kirin series is replacing Snapdragon, the Ascend series is replacing NVIDIA's A100 and H100, and Changshan and Changshan are replacing Micron, among others. Who will these US chips be sold to after mass production begins? The cost is too high, so who will buy them? Regarding cost, US companies are quoting prices for silicon wafers as high as $800 to $1,000 per wafer, while domestic companies like Tianquehida and Shandong Tianyu are quoting prices at $400 per wafer, a significant drop in price. Crystal growth furnaces from US companies cost around $4 million to $5 million, while those from North Huachuang are priced at only $2 million. Amex etching machines are around 20% cheaper than those from applied materials, with a delivery time three months shorter. In terms of electricity prices, the average domestic industrial price is between 0.4 and 0.6 yuan per kilowatt hour, while US industrial prices are over 1 yuan per kilowatt hour. Furthermore, Chinese chips offer advantages in labor costs, freshwater resources, and transportation. When Chinese chips enter the market, they will impact inflated prices of overseas chips. Take solid-state drives, for example. Previously, a 1TB SSD cost between 1,500 and 2,000 yuan, but now only costs 200 to 400 yuan, a price reduction of up to 90%. DDR4 used to cost 500 yuan for 16 gigabytes, but now it's just over 100 yuan, a price reduction of 80%. The same is true for AI chips and mobile phone socks. Therefore, despite Trump's announcement of a 100% tariff on imported chips, forcing advanced chip companies to build factories in the United States, reshaping American manufacturing and altering the global chip landscape. However, outdated infrastructure and a shortage of manufacturing talent are hindering the commissioning of wafer fabs. Even if mass production is achieved, insufficient consumer demand could lead to continued losses in China's competitive chip landscape. In short, the Trump administration's hope of changing the global chip landscape through tariff increases, may be just a pipe dream. I'm Tech Ming Cheng. Welcome to leave a comment and discuss.